वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन इज द प्रैक्टिस ऑफ प्रोटेक्टिंग वाइल्ड प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल स्पीशीज एंड देयर हैबिटेट्स दिस कंजर्वेशन प्रोजेक्ट इन इंडिया फोकस्ड ऑन प्रोटेक्टिंग एंड प्रिजर्विंग एंडेंजर्ड स्पीशीज एंड हैबिटेट्स थ्रू वेरियस टारगेटेड इनिशिएटिव्स दिस प्रोजेक्ट्स आर क्रूशियल फॉर द सर्वाइवल ऑफ इंडियाज यूनिक वाइल्ड लाइफ this conservation become more important in present day due to negative effects of human activities wildlife conservation act 1972 is one of india's most significant environmental legislation aimed at conserving the country's rich and diverse wildlife this act marked the turning point in country's approach to wildlife conservation let's move to some historical aspect of wildlife conservation historical perspective of wildlife laws and policies in india spanning to pre colonial colonial and post colonial eras india has rich history of wildlife conservation and preservation dating back to ancient and medieval period in vedic period the aryans worshiped nature and praised the environment the ramayanas and mahabharatas the two ancient epics emphasized the significance of animals in the society wildlife flourished under the hindus and muslim rulers including mauryas ashokas guptas and mughals the rishis during ancient times were aware of the importance of wildlife According to Manu Smriti dating back to 200 BC protecting environment considered as a duty mentioned that it was the responsibility of a ruler or a king to ensure the wildlife protection the arthashastra by kaudilya or chanakya recorded first legal provision relating to environment in ancient mauryan period chandragupta maurya and his prime minister kaudilya deals with the environmental protection strictly laying down various rules and regulations for protecting the environment and upgrading ecology they maintained zoological gardens zoos reserved forest where animals lived without human interference the king ashoka widely considered as one of the most significant indian ruler who made large contribution to wildlife and environmental conservation in 3rd century bc he introduced the fifth pillar edict which was the first documented conservation laws in india in ayurveda and vishnu samhita all emphasize the importance of peacefully coexisting with the animals wildlife also featured in panchatantra and buddhist jataka tales During Mughal period spanning from 1526 to 1707 also had a deep appreciation for nature and great interest in wildlife hence we can say that pre colonial india's legacy of wildlife conservation laid the foundation for modern wildlife policies and initiatives india had a rich wildlife before the arrival of british but their rule brought a decline in the population of wild animals due to demand of land result of large scale killing of wild animals including tigers leopard elephant hunted down without any regulation in early 19th century the rising ambition of east india company to extend the colonial control over the forest territories led to appropriation of territories and the wildlife although british officials engaged in hunting and depletion of wild life there were some attempts to conserve the wildlife through various policies and legislation even though it was not a priority to british rulers the first legal statute of wild conservation only in 1887 that was the enactment of wild birds protection act in 1887 In 1912 British government passed Wild Bird and Animal Protection Act 
which was later amended in 1935 this 1912 act became the first to law to prohibit hunting wild animals and birds with violators facing legal penalties indian forest act 1927 was enacted to consolidate the laws relating to the transit of forest produce and levy duties on timber the main objective was to collect the revenues from these resources only madras elephant protection act 1873 was the early attempt to formalize the wildlife protection in 1904 mary curzon wife of lord curzon visited kanjiranga national park famous for the population of one horn rhinoceros and took effective step to increase the population of rhinos in 1905 conservation of asiatic lion in gir forest under the jurisdiction of nawab of junagadh he completely banned the hunting of lions in gir forest and refused any hunting permit in 1935 the first national park haley national park was declared this was remarkable in the history of wildlife conservation and its name changed as Corbett National Park after Jim Corbett who has done a lot of conservation work in this area post independence first genuine need to protect the wildlife in India was realized in 1952 Indian Wildlife Board was constituted to centralize all the rules and regulations of wildlife conservation of India and to advise the central government on various nature hence it act as the advisory body to central government under section 5 of wildlife protection act 1972 it replaced by a statutory board renamed as national board for wildlife let's move to some constitutional provision for the conservation of wildlife under article 48a directive principles of state policy puts an obligation to state to protect safeguard and work for the improvement of forest and wildlife in the country article 51 ag says that it shall be a fundamental duty of every citizen to protect improve the natural resources forest and wildlife moreover subjects relating to protection of wildlife are mentioned under the concurrent list which means both the parliament and state legislature assemblies are empowered to make laws on this subject the wildlife protection act of 1972 provides a legal framework for the protection of various species of wild animals and plants management of their habitats regulation and control of trade in wild animals plants and products made from them this act also lists schedules of plants and animals that are afforded by various degrees of protection and monitoring by the government india's entries to sites convention of international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora was made easier by the wildlife protection act 1972 earlier jammu and kashmir was not covered by wildlife protection act of 1972 and now applies to jammu and kashmir as a result of the reorganization act this act also defines the word animal broadly include mammals birds reptiles amphibians fish other chordates and invertebrates as well as their young and eggs and the section 3 of this act central government can appoint director assistant director and officers and employees and state government can appoint wildlife warden in each district and section 6 of this act uh, mandates state government must create state board for wildlife is a wildlife advisory board composed of chief minister as the chairman and forest minister as the vice chairman two members of the state legislature secretary to state government 
ഫോറസ്റ്റ് ഓഫീസർ ഇൻ ചാർജ് ചീഫ് വൈൽഡ് ലൈഫ് വാർഡൻ ഫൈവ് സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഗവൺമെൻറ് ഓഫീസർ ആൻഡ് ത്രീ ട്രൈബൽസ് ഹെൽപ്സ് ഇൻ പ്രിസർവിംഗ് ദ വൈൽഡ് ലൈഫ് ആൻഡ് മെയിൻ ഡ്യൂട്ടീസ് ഓഫ് ദി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് അഡ്വൈസറി ബോർഡ്സ് ആർ സെലക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ഏരിയാസ് ആർ സാഞ്ചുറീസ് നാഷണൽ പാർക്ക് ആൻഡ് ക്ലോസ്ഡ് ഏരിയാസ് ഫോർമുലേഷൻ ഓഫ് പോളിസീസ് അമൻമെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇൻ ഷെഡ്യൂൾസ് ഹാർമണൈസിംഗ് ദ നീഡ് ഓഫ് ട്രൈബൽസ് ആൻഡ് ഡ്വലേഴ്സ് സെക്ഷൻ സിക്സ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ആക്ട് ഡീൽസ് വിത്ത് പ്രൊഹിബിഷൻ ഓഫ് ഹണ്ടിങ് നോൺ ഹണ്ടിങ് എക്സെപ്റ്റ് സം നെസസറി റീസൺസ് ഡേഞ്ചറസ് ടു ഹ്യൂമൻ ലൈഫ് ഹ്യൂമൻ ലൈഫ് സ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ക്രോപ്സ് സെൽഫ് ഡിഫെൻസ് ആൻഡ് ഗവൺമെൻറ് പ്രോപ്പർട്ടീസ് സിമിലർലി ചീഫ് വൈൽഡ് ലൈഫ് വാർഡൻ ക്യാൻ ഗ്രാൻഡ് പെർമിഷൻ ഫോർ ഹണ്ടിങ് ഓൺലി ഫോർ സ്പെഷ്യൽ പർപ്പസ് മെൻഷൻ എബോവ് ലെറ്റ്സ് മൂവ് ടു സം പ്രൊവിഷൻ ഫോർ ദ എസ്റ്റാബ്ലിഷ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് വൈൽഡ് ലൈഫ് സാഞ്ചുറീസ് ആൻഡ് നാഷണൽ പാർക്ക് സെക്ഷൻ എയ്റ്റീൻ ഓഫ് this act deals with the establishment of wildlife sanctuaries state government can declare any area as sanctuary if such area is of adequate geomorphological ecological natural zoological floral and faunal significance for the purpose of protecting and propagating or developing wildlife and its environment no alternation of boundaries of sanctuaries shall be made except on the resolution passed by the state legislature restriction on the entry into sanctuaries other than public servant on duty a person or his dependent who has been permitted by chief wildlife warden or authorized officer to reside within the limit of the sanctuaries a person and their dependent who has right over immovable property within the limit of the sanctuary a person passing through the sanctuary along with the public highway etc chief wildlife warden grant any permission to enter or reside in a sanctuary for following purpose for investigation or study photography scientific research tourism interaction of lawful business with any person residing in the sanctuary section 35 deals with the declaration of national park state government can declare any area as national park as in the same procedure in sanctuaries all provisions of sanctuaries applicable to national park also central government also have power to declare some area as national park or wildlife sanctuaries by notification in case of state government most of the power lies with chief wildlife warden and in case of central government power lies with director national board for wildlife it is constituted by the central government under section 5a of wildlife protection act 1972 as we discussed in previous slide the board was replaced Indian Board for Wildlife which was formed in 1952 it is a 47 member committee chaired by the prime minister and minister of environment forest and climate change as the vice chairperson it includes defense and expenditure secretaries army chief and other high ranking officials further the general government nominates 10 members who are eminent conservationist ecologist and environmentalist and serve as the apex body to review all wildlife related matters and approve projects in and around the national park sanctuaries and the protected areas no alternation of boundaries in national park and wildlife sanctuaries can be done without the approval of national board for wildlife